Welcome to a new stream of content for our YouTube channel looking at good and bad crime, violence, and justice journalism in Chicago. We're looking today at a Sun Times article um, authored by who's someone who's going to be a frequent flyer. He's already a frequent flyer on our blog. On our website, we cover a lot of what Frank Maine does and try to describe the problems with it. And this is this time is no different, unfortunately. It's an article a recent article published titled After Anjanette Young Search Warrant Reforms, a Massive Drop in Number of Chicago Police Department Raids on Homes. With a subheadline of, in 2021, after the reforms, the number of resident residential searches dropped by 172, with 183 last year, down from 509 in 2020. A former Chicago police commander says that that means criminals will feel more free to do their illegal business. Interesting headline, strong numbers. Will we get to where we need to go? Will he give us the goods, the why? Right. This is another article, another issue with the Sun Times and Tribune, especially around crime and violence journalism. I got some numbers. I got a couple of quotes. I'm golden. Not the case. Now, to put some context to this, this is all around the Anjanette Young case that you'll remember in late 2020, where the cops raided the wrong apartment. Miss Young was in the middle of changing, so when they raid her apartment, she's naked. And it turns out all kinds of um, details come out about the raid, about how the sergeant and the officers involved didn't do the work necessary to find out the person they were actually after was sitting in Cook County Jail, and they should have done that before applying for the warrant. And it seems like they misled their supervisors and the judge about the level of investigation they did before getting the warrant. And then they go and they hit the wrong apartment. So in May of 2021, there's all kinds of reforms brought forth. Let's go through them. A high-ranking supervisor with the rank of deputy chief or higher must now approve every search on a home after an investigation verifies the information and the application for the warrant. A supervisor with the rank of lieutenant or higher must be present during the search. Each member of the search team must wear a body cam. No-knock warrants are prohibited until officers can show there's a danger to their safety and a chief approves the warrant. A misconduct investigation must follow any wrongful raid. Officers have to fill out additional forms to document each search. Okay, what's wrong with any of that? Now, it doesn't go as far as the Anjanette Young Ordinance, produced by some um, older, older people. Uh, Murray Head in the 49th Ward brought that up. Um, of course, Mayor Lightfoot and their chairperson, chairperson Talafario of the Public Safety Committee, no desire to pass that at all, and it just got buried. So let's look at the numbers of, on raids in these homes, raids on homes that this article brought forth. 2017, 2,900. 2018, 1,700. 2019, 1,380. 2020, 509. Pandemic kicks in. 2021, 172, 2022, 183. Wow, a 90% drop. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the subheadline and the criminals being emboldened, crime and violence in Chicago dropped in 17, 18, and 19. So a big chunk of where there's the reduction in these raids on homes, crime and violence in Chicago is dropping. Crime doesn't start going up till January of 20. Hmm, what's going on there? Right? The, these numbers are the start of the reporting. It's the why that matters. What's going on? But that takes effort. It takes actual real reporting skills. It's the why that matters. The article talks about it. The Office of Inspector General in 2021 did a report on search warrants and saw that drugs accounted where they're just looking for drugs in the house. That's it. They're not looking for guns. They're just looking for drugs. 75% of the searches. Guns, firearms, searching for guns and firearms, search uh, accounted for the other 25%. Now, the article has quotes, both from a, uh, a plaintiff's attorney for another um, person who sued for a wrongful raid and got a settlement. And then the other quotes are from a former Chicago police officer. 
And they go without context and without rebuttal because it's both sides journalism, right? Here are these numbers I found. Yay. I get a quote from one side. They're, these numbers, the drop is good. Drop quote from another guy. Drop is horrible. Yay. I did my job. So who's the quote from? Eric Winstrom, the police chief in Grand Rapids, Michigan, who formerly was commander of Chicago Police Department's Area 5 Detectives Headquarters. What does Winstrom say? Quote right from the article. Winstrom says cops aren't seeking many search warrants in Chicago because they're afraid of the consequences of making a mistake. He points to a sergeant, Alex Wolinski, who was a supervisor at the Young Raid, which resulted in the city agreeing to pay her $2.9 million settlement. Earlier this month, the Chicago Police Board voted to fire Wolinski for a failure of leadership. And this is the last quote from Winstrom. Long gone are the days of a superintendent can with a straight face say, hey, you know, if you make a mistake, I got your back. Well, well, um, man, um, how about a little context into what did Walensky actually do that got him fired? Winstrom says a, a failure of leadership. Go get, go get the details. The, the police board's judgment and the charges against him, the judgment is all public. Go get it. Talk about well, what Walensky actually did. Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't do the investigation they were supposed to before getting the warrant. That's Walensky's responsibility. They didn't do it. There was no need to go into any apartment because the person they were seeking was actually in Cook County Jail. They would have known that had they done their due diligence. They didn't do it. It resulted in raiding the wrong house. You would think, you raid the wrong apartment at point guns at people. You probably should get some discipline. You do that as a result of not doing the investigation that you blew, knew you had to do and blew off. You should probably get fired. I'm sorry, you probably should get fired. And the lieutenant who proved it probably should get dinged, right? I think all the way up the chain, maybe they all get fired. But what does Maine do? He runs this quote probably from actually quotes from both sides, right? Without any context, without challenging anything. Because he doesn't care. That's what lazy journalism is about. All he's got, he's got these numbers. I got this quote one side, I got this quote the other side, I'm golden. This is the typical crappy journalism that we see in Chicago and crime reporting around the country, specifically in Chicago. Frank Maine's lauded with all these awards and everyone loves them. This thing's a piece of crap. What Maine has here, ladies and gentlemen, really is only the basis of starting an investigative project, right? That's all he's got. Okay, we got these numbers. Well, what the hell do they mean? Why did crime go down, especially in 18 and 19? The numbers were, were high for the raids in 17, but why did they go down in 18, 19 if we're talking... You know, by by 19, compared to the numbers in 17, there was over a 50% drop in raids on homes. If they're so vital to preventing crime and violence, then why the hell did violence drop in 17, 18, and 19? That's what's got to be researched. That's what's got to be looked at. That's journalism. But you're not going to get it from the trends of sometimes and these reporters that are just focused on both sides of them, right? I got the numbers, quote, quote, done, done. Give me, a, give me my little star. No, that's not how it should be done. But now we have all these numbers out in the world. People are going to complain about them, but there's no context. That's what we need. We need the why. And you just don't get it. That is why we're doing this stream for our YouTube channel, the stream of content. There'll be other ones, including FOP Watch. We're going to get the Alt-Right Watch. That's all coming to this channel in the coming weeks. Um, so this will be, as with the Alt-Right and the FOP Watch, there'll be um, content that streams on these. There'll be constant pop, constantly going to the channel, but there'll be different topics related to what's breaking in the news. So that'll all be coming in the next few weeks. I really want to say thank you for watching this. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to our podcast, please do so, the Chicago Justice Podcast. That comes, drops every Wednesday with interviews of people, um, journalists that are doing good work, but also um, 
criminal justice officials. The podcast coming dropping tomorrow features Kelly Garcia and Carlos Badastados from Black Club Chicago, um, talking about their phenomenal reporting around the Juvenile Temporary Detention Center. Um, last week's pod featured Deborah Witzberg talking about their work on Rule 14 violations and how the Chicago Police Department just doesn't seem, and the police accountability system just doesn't seem they want to fire officers for lying um, while doing their official duties. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back at you soon.